This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, now, uh, this chapter is headed up Statement of Financial Position and Statement of Profit or Loss. Uh, I mentioned in the uh, previous lecture, the introductory lecture, I mentioned several times that our object ultimately, at the end of uh, each period, we need to produce these two statements. Well, I'm going to use this chapter mainly to explain what these two statements are showing, uh, what they look like. Uh, I say mainly because there are a few other things uh, towards the end. Uh, and it is quite a long chapter, and so I will break the lecture into several, otherwise you'll fall asleep halfway through. Uh, and what I want to do first, um, if you, paragraph two says the dual or double effect of transactions, uh, we're going to look at a series of transactions for a business and look at what the effect of those transactions is on the business. Now, we're not going to go into proper recording yet. That's the next chapter. So if you've heard of anything to do with double entry debits, credits, for the moment, forget it. Uh, you'll see what I mean as we go through. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. It's quite a straightforward exercise, but just looking at the effect of transactions on the business. And so, see what I mean? Let's start going through. There's a bit of space in the notes, so, you know, do it with me. And when you see what's happening, by all means, pause the lecture and do a few of them yourself. But it says, let us consider the effect of the following transactions on a sole trader. So for the moment, we're looking purely at a sole trader. Uh, limited companies, I'll deal with later, but effectively exactly the same. Just a little bit of layout I have to deal with later. But we're a sole trader. And the first thing is the owner puts $10,000 into a separate bank account for the business. So all the way through, I'm going to treat the business as though it is separate and look at the effect of these transactions on the business. And so, What's the effect going to be? As far as the business is concerned, the business now owns cash of 10,000. There's the first effect. You put in a separate bank account, the business owns 10,000. But at the same time, surely, the business owes the owner 10,000. So there's how the business stands. They've got 10,000 in the bank. And treating the business as though it's separate, it, the business owes the owner 10,000. I know it's rather stupid, but if we were to close down immediately, take the 10,000, pay it back to the owner. Uh, now, before I go any further, two bits of terminology. And that's another use I'm going to make of this chapter to get through a lot of the terminology that's involved. Uh, first of all, I've said the owner owns, sorry, I beg your pardon, the business owns 10,000. Well, we call that an asset. An asset is anything owned by the business. So we have assets of 10,000. At the same time, we owe the owner 10,000. Well, uh, money owed to the owner, we call capital. If money's owed to the owner, it's capital. So there we are. I said this was nice and straightforward, but there's the first one, A. Go back to the question. The next thing that happens, the business buys a shop for 2,000. So let's list again. What do they now own? Well, they've still got cash, of course. But uh, whereas there was 10,000, if they've just paid 2,000 for a shop, the cash has fallen to 8,000. So that's one effect of this transaction with less cash. Uh, but the other effect is, of course, they now own a shop. 
2000. So uh, the total assets are 10,000. Remember, an asset is anything owned by the business. And what does the business owe? Well, they still own the owner 10,000. And remember, anything owed to the owner is capital. So there's what they own, there's what they owe. Over the page, C. They now buy goods for resale in cash for a thousand. Now, goods for resale sounds very posh, but um, uh, goods for resale, uh, you know, we're in business, I don't know, maybe we're buying and selling DVDs. Well, whatever it is we're selling, we're buying some. So we're buying some DVDs for a thousand. These are things we're buying now, but we intend, or we're hoping, obviously, to sell and make a profit. So, what do we own? Well, the first effect, of course, is we've now spent a thousand uh, buying these goods, and so one effect is that the cash has fallen. It was eight, it's now fallen to seven. Uh, we've still got the shop, two thousand. But a new asset has appeared, in that although on the one hand the cash has fallen, we've now got these goods that we've paid a thousand. Well, another bit of terminology, we call this inventory. An inventory are goods for resale. If you've seen any of this before, we used to call it stock, uh, but that's now old fashioned. The correct word these days is inventory. And so there have been two effects of this transaction. On the one hand, the cash fell, but the other effect, inventory appeared, a new asset. Uh, so two effects, but the total assets are still at 10,000. And what does the business owe? Well, they still owe the capital, they still owe the owner 10,000. And already it should be clear what I'm doing. I'm keeping preparing a little statement listing what we own and what we owe. As you'll see, this is effectively our statement of financial position. When you come to the end, I'll show you what we call a pretty layout of it. But that's all this statement is, really. A list of what we own and a list of what we owe. However, let's carry on. There's plenty more to do. D. We buy more goods for resale, but this time on credit. And what we mean when we buy on credit, nothing to do with debits, credits. Uh, it simply means if you buy on credit, you're buying the goods, but instead of paying for them immediately, We'll owe money, we'll pay for them later. Maybe we'll pay for them next month. So let's do our list again. What do we owe? We've still got cash, and it's still 7,000. We haven't yet paid for these goods, so cash doesn't change. We've still got the shop. The shop, I think, was it 2,000? Sorry, I don't have to keep winding up and down. Inventory uh, well we did have inventory of a thousand uh, but we've now bought more goods for another two thousand and so the inventory is three thousand and there's the first effect of the transaction the inventory has increased and so our assets are twelve thousand but what does the business owe? Well, we still owe the owner, the capital, 10,000. But we also owe the supplier. We bought the goods on credit, so we owe the supplier 2,000. Well, too much, uh, sorry, 
two more bits of terminology. Two words here. Uh, first of all, uh, money owed to a supplier we call a payable. Money owed to suppliers. Uh, so uh, uh, payables here of 2,000. Now the reason I'm going to mention another bit of terminology though is of course there are several reasons why you might owe money to people apart from the owner. Here we owe money because we bought goods. Look at the situation where we owe money because we borrowed from the bank. Well money owed whatever the reason is a liability. Liability is money owed to anyone except the owner. Uh, well, if it's owed to the owner, it's capital, but any other money owing whether it's because you bought goods, a payable, or whether it's owed to the bank because you borrowed, money owed to anybody else is a liability. Uh, but what's the uh, final position here? We've got assets of 12,000. We've also, though, we're owing 12,000. 10 to the owner, 2 uh, to the suppliers. And it's something I said earlier, and I won't keep saying, but in theory, if we were to close down today, we'd sell the shop, sell the inventory, giving us a total of 12,000. And where would it go? 2,000 to the supplier, we all went to, and the remaining 10 back to the owner. Off we go. Where are we up to now? E. We buy a car for 3,000 cash. Now, if you get in the hang of this, by all means, pause and let you do it yourself. Fill it in yourself and then check back. But what happens if we buy a car? First of all, what do we owe? Well, we bought it for cash, so the first thing, of course, the first effect, is that the cash reduces. It was seven. We've now paid out three, so the cash has fallen to 4,000. Uh, we've still got the shop. Uh, we've still got the inventory. Was that 3,000? Uh, 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 yes. Ah, but the second effect, of course, is we've now got a new asset, a car, 3,000. So, as always, two effects here. One asset, the cash has fallen. Another asset, the car has increased, but always two effects. However, our total assets are now six, nine, twelve thousand. And who's it owed to? We still owe the owner the original ten thousand. And we still owe that supplier. Two thousand. So again, effectively our statement of financial position, a list of what we own and what we owe. F. Ah, this is a fun one. We sell half of the goods for 2,400 cash. So what do we owe? First effect. Uh, the cash goes up. The cash was 4,000. We sold goods for 2,400, so the cash goes up to 6,400. Uh, we've still got the shop. We've still got the car. But the second effect um, the inventory is fallen. We did have inventory of, what was it, 3,000? 
We've sold half of it, so we've only got half left. 1,500. So two effects. Cash went up, inventory went down. And so the total assets Hope my addition's right, 12,900. Ah, who's it owed to? Well, watch me, it may already be obvious, but you know, I'm doing what I'm doing for a reason, so be patient with me. We still owe the owner that original 10,000. And leaving a space, we still owe the payable, the supplier, what was it, 2,000. But of course, there's something missing because the assets are worth 12,9. In theory, if we sell, shut the business today, we've got 12,900. Pay the supplier 2,000, that leaves us with 10,900. But what, what's that extra 900? Well, we'll check it in a minute. But that extra 900 must be the profit. And any profit is owed to the owner. The owner is in fact 10, owed 10,900 now. Total owed 12,9. And that 900 was, if you like, just the missing figure. You know, if we close down with 12,900 from our assets, we pay the supplier 2,000, there's 10,900 left. It must belong to the owner. Uh, but of course, it's probably already obvious, we can check that profit easily. In that why we're making a profit, we sold goods for more than they cost. The sale we sold goods for, what was it, 2,400. What was the cost of what we sold? Well, it was half of the inventory. 1,500. And if you sold goods that had cost 1,500, if you sold them for 2,400, well, we've made a profit of 900. And any profit belongs to the owner, so the total capital now, the total owed to the owner, is the 10,000 they originally put in the business plus the 900 profit. And although a very, very simple one there, that check on the profit is effectively, as you'll see later, our second statement. That statement, our statement of profit or loss, so this is a very simple one, but it's going to show how much profit we made during the period. Okay, we're nearly there. Well, not quite, but still. Next one, G. We sell the remainder of the goods for 2,800 on credit. So again, a bit like before, if we sell on credit, we're selling the goods, but instead of receiving the cash immediately, uh, the customer's going to pay us later, they'll owe us the money. So again, what do we owe? Cash. That won't change, it was 6,400. We sell goods, but we haven't had the cash yet, so cash stays at 6,4. Uh, we've still got the shop. I always get these the wrong way around. Was the shop two? Yes. The shop two and the car three. The first effect, though, is, of course, the inventory has now disappeared. We did have inventory of 1,500, but all the rest of these goods, the rest of the inventory has been sold. So the inventory is now zero. <coughs> So there's one effect, 
and asset inventory has reduced. Second effect, though, is a new asset has appeared in that a customer owes us $2,800. It's an asset. They owe us money. Ah, later, they're going to pay us. Uh, well, uh, another bit of terminology. Uh, if a customer owes us money, it's called a receivable. It's money owed to the business. It used to be called debtors, but we don't anymore. It's receivables. So, two effects. Uh, inventory has fallen. Um, the receivable has increased, but the total assets are now 4, 12, 1, 2, 10, 12, I think 14,200. Who's the money owed to? Well, the original capital. was 10,000. We still owe the owner the original 10,000. Uh, we still owe the payables, the supplier, 2,000. But that's a total of 12. Where's the remaining 2,200 going? Again, we'll check it in a minute. But the remaining 2,200 must be owed to the owner it's the profit. But again, that was effectively a missing figure. You know, the money must be owed somewhere and the missing bit must be owed to the owner. But again, we can easily check it. What are the sales? Now, we don't show them each individually. In total now, what have we sold? In F, we sold 2,400. In G, another 2,800. So in total, we've sold goods for 5,200. This is just my workings. What was the cost of what we sold? Well, we've sold all the inventory. And if you look back to note, uh, oh, you, I've lost it, note C and D, in total, uh, we bought inventory, 1,000 plus 2,000. Again, that's just my workings, 3,000. So we had goods costing 3,000, which was sold for 5,2. The profit is indeed 2,200. So again, a little statement of profit or loss there. We're showing total, total sales, total cost. Uh, and since the profit is 2-2, the amount owed to the owner is increased by 2-2. The total capital, the total owing, is now 12-2. Over the page, H. The business pays 600 of the amount owing on account. All this means, remember we do owe, where is it? We owe the supplier 2,000 at the moment. Um, we're going to pay him 600. <laughs> it says on account. It means we're going to pay 600 what we owe. The rest of it we'll pay later. It'll still be owing. So let's go through yet again. What do we owe? Well, we've just paid some cash. So first effect is the cash will fall. It was 6,400. If it goes down by 600, this payment, the cash falls to 5,800. Uh, we've still got the shop, 2,000, and the car, 3,000. I think I've got those the right way around. Yes. 
Uh, we've no inventory, so I won't show it. We don't normally list zero items. Uh, but we do still have the receivable. That customer still owes us, what was it, 2,800. So what are the total assets now? Uh, six. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Six, eight, eleven, thirteen thousand six hundred. And what do we owe? Uh, well, uh, the proprietor's not, the owner's not affected. The original capital, they still owe ten thousand. The profit, well, we've not sold any more goods. And so the profit is still 2,200. The owner's owed 12,2. But the second effect is that payables, we were owing the supplier 2,000. We've just paid 600. So we now only owe the remaining 1,400. So two effects as always. This time, Cash has fallen, and the liability, the payables, have fallen as well. Next one. Now, now this is an interesting one. I. The business pays electricity of two hundred. Hmm. What do we owe? Oh, we just paid out 200, so the cash will fall. It was 5.8, the cash will fall to 5.6. Um, the shop, we've still got the shop. We've still got the car. Inventory, uh, we haven't got any more goods, so the inventory is still zero, and I won't bother listing it. Uh, we've still got receivables of 2.8. So, so far, there's only been one effect. The cash has fallen. And total assets, therefore, are 1, 6, 8, 11, 13, 400. What do we owe? Well, the original capital is still 10,000. Uh, the payable, we still owe the supplier, what was it, 1,400? Yeah. But I wonder where the second effect's going to be. See, before when I spent money, we bought a shop, so cash fell and the shop appeared. We bought a car, cash fell, car appeared. We bought inventory, cash fell, inventory appeared. Here we bought electricity. We paid electricity with less cash. But with no new asset, electricity is something we use. It's not as though we've bought a pile of electricity, we've got an asset. 13,400, well, what must fall surely, and we'll check in a minute, is the profit. The profit was 2,200, but we've spent 200 running the business, an expense. Uh, the profit must have fallen by this 200 we needed to run the business. Now, I'll check in a minute, but if the profit fells to 2,000, total owed to the owner is now 12,000, um, total owing 13,400. Again, let's check the profit and watch the layout, even though it's only a little one. Uh, we show the total sales, and that's not changed. If you look back, the total sales were, I think, 5,200? Yes. Uh, the cost of the sales is that inventory, if you remember, which in total had cost 3,000. And so, so far, we were making a profit of 2,200. 
We call that the gross profit. However, in order to be able to buy and sell those goods and make a profit of 2,200, we had an expense of running the business. There are all sorts of expenses of running a business. We have to pay electricity, maybe we have to pay telephone, maybe we have to pay wages. But any costs of running the business reduces the final profit. And so we then subtract our expenses. Here it was electricity. Leaving a final profit of 2,000. And we call that the net profit. Now, don't worry, I'll run through a pretty layout when we come to the end of this exercise. Uh, but the two effects here, when we paid an expense, the cash fell, fewer assets. It was a cost of running the business. The profit fell. There was less owing to the owner. All right, only two left, and then we'll let you have a rest before we carry on with the chapter. J. The business receives half of the amount owing to it on account. So a bit like we had before, but this time, uh, remember, we're owed 2,800. Uh, the customer, instead of paying it all at once, they're going to pay half of it now. Half is 1,400. Uh, they'll pay the rest of it later. They'll still owe the rest of it. So what are the effects? First of all, they are paying us half, your 1400 so cash will go up by 1400 5600 plus 1400 is 7000 uh, We've still got the shop, we've still got the car. Uh, we've no inventory, remember, uh, but there are still receivables. We were owed 2,800, they've just paid us half of it. So we're still owed 1,400. So there are the two effects. Cash has gone down, uh, gone up, I'm sorry, cash has gone up. Receivables have gone down. So the total assets, 13,400. Assuming I am adding up correctly, yes. What do we owe? Well, there's no more profit or anything, so the owner stays the same. The original capital is that original 10,000. In addition, the owners of the profit of, was it 2,000? Yes. Uh, and, of course, we still owe the payable, that supplier, is still owed 1400 All right, only one left, and then we've got it. Uh, but an important one. So if you are falling asleep, pinch yourself and watch this one, or pause and have a sleep and then watch this one. Uh, but the last one is... The owner takes 1200 from the business. Now remember, the business is owned by the owner. At the moment, the owner is owed 12000 They put 10000 in originally, the business has made profits, so the owner is owed 12000 but so far hasn't had anything at all. Well, the owner decides they need some money to live on. Well, it's the owner's business. I'm owed 12,000. We can take what we want. The owner's decided to take out 1,200. What are the effects? First of all, what do we owe? Well, cash, if the owner's taken out 1,200, uh, the cash falls by 1,200. So what was it? It was seven. If it goes down by 1,200, 
the cash falls to 5,800. Uh, still got the shop. Still got the car. Uh, still got that receivable. And so the total assets, uh, 8, 12, uh, 6, 8, 12,200. So, so far, one effect, the cash has fallen. What does the business owe? Well, the owner, the owner was owed the original capital of 10,000. In addition, the owner was owed any profit made by the business. Was it 2,000? Or if it, that's what we ended up with, wasn't it? Yes. And the fact the owner's taken some money out doesn't affect how much profit the business made. The business bought goods, sold goods, paid electricity, made a profit of 2,000. And that's how much profit the business has made, whether the owner took out nothing or whether the owner took out 5,000, makes no difference. The profit is 2,000. But of course, whereas the owner was owed 12, if the owner's now taken out uh, 1,200, the owner will be owed less. And so how much has the owner taken out? 1,200. The amount owed to the owner is 10,8. Now I'll give you a name for it in a minute, the last bit of terminology for the moment. But terribly importantly, money the owner takes out doesn't make any difference to how much profit was made. The profit was 2,000, whatever happens. But separately, any money the owner takes back from the business reduces the total they're owed. The total they're owed is now 10 and 8. Uh, before I give you the terminology, just to complete it, uh, we still, of course, have that liability. We owe the payables 1,400. And so the total owed by the business is 12.2. Well, that 1,200 the owner took, and do remember, we're a sole trader. This is one bit limited companies have slightly different words for, but we'll come to that later. But we call that 1,200 drawings or withdrawals. It doesn't matter which word you use. And although um, in the next lecture I will say slightly more about this, drawings or withdrawals is what we call anything taken from the business by the owner. And I've already said I don't want these lectures to get too long. Uh, I'd rather break this chapter into several because there is a lot here. So I'm going to say a bit more about drawings afterwards in the next lecture. Uh, but for the moment, there we are. Uh, and to see what's happened, I've kept doing these statements. And two important things. One is, and go back through them if you need, every transaction has two effects. Buy a car, less cash car appears. There have always been two effects. And second is that these statements, although in the next lecture I will show you pretty layout and things, effectively this statement is a statement of financial position, or what used to be called balance sheet, a list of what we own, the assets, and a list of what we owe the capital and the liabilities, the other payables. I say we smarten up the layout a bit, that's in the next lecture, but effectively that's a statement of financial position. 
as we were going along, we did a check on the profit. Well, again, although we'll, I'll show you a pretty layout in the next lecture, that statement is effectively a statement of profit or loss, where we're showing how much profit was made, 2000, and how it was made, what we sold, what we bought, and what the expenses were. All right, so sorry that took a long time, but it is quite important because we have got through quite a lot of the terminology that goes with all of this. However, there is a fair bit more to do in the chapter. I'll carry on in the next lecture.